Welcome to your third R tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to use variables and perform some simple operations using those variables. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to start up here in the source on the upper left hand side, and I'm going to start by creating some variables. Now, variables are uh, things that a user creates to, uh, to source some information. One of the nice things about variables is that you have a lot of freedom to name them uh, whatever you want. Um, and usually you want to name them something that's going to be easy for you to remember. Uh, because in these simple programs, it's going to be easy to keep track of everything. But if you start writing something with hundreds of lines or thousands of lines or even tens of thousands of lines of code, you want to give something, uh, you want to give your variables some meaningful names so that it's easy to remember what they are later on. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, these variables are going to represent four people. And I'm going to go ahead and assign each of these people an age. So let's start with that. Romeo. He is 18. Juliet. She is 42. Oscar. He is 44. And Sierra. She is 17. Okay. Now, one thing you noticed is that even though I've typed four lines up here in the source, nothing has been sent to the console yet. Now, before, what I've done in previous videos is I've just hit the run button up here on the upper right hand side of the uh, source pane. But if I hit the run button, it's only going to send one line. If I want to send all the lines that I have in my source down into the console, there's two ways I can do that. One way is I could hit this other icon just to the right of the run button that will send every uh, single line in the source down into the console. Or I could use a keyboard shortcut. And on a Mac, it's Command, Shift, Return. On a Windows machine, it is Control, Shift, Return. I'm going to go ahead and use the keyboard shortcuts. Everything got sent down to the console, and as we saw in the last video, everything that I had in my source gets sent down to the console, and on the right-hand side, uh, these four variables show up in, um, in my workspace. Uh, one thing that's a little bit different from the last video is you'll notice that up here, these four variables are considered values rather than data. Uh, and the reason is, is uh, data is something a little bit special that has rows and columns these variables only have one value in them so they're just considered values okay so now that we have these values well what can you really do with this information uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you a few things now if we want to ever recall the value that's stored in a variable uh, all we need to do is type that variable send it to the uh, and execute it in the console, and then we'll see uh, we'll see what value is stored within that variable. I'll do that now. You can see I've up here in the source I've typed Romeo. I'm going to hit Command Return to send it to the console, and we can see well 18 was stored in Romeo. Another thing that we can do is well once a value is stored in a variable, there's nothing that prevents us from changing that value. So let's say well uh, let's say we wanted something in our program where we initially stored 44 in Oscar, but then later on, well, we have to edit for some reason, and Oscar becomes 38 instead. You can see I have Oscar, the assignment operator, and 38. I'm going to hit Command Enter, and well, let's see what value is stored in Oscar. I'm going to send it, and as you can see, Oscar is now 38. No surprise there. Uh, that's exactly uh, what we would have expected. We can also perform some operations, uh, math operations, using these variables. So let's say we wanted to find out what the difference is between Juliet's age and Romeo's age. Now in this case, it's really simple. We can just say, if we were just doing this really simple small program, we could just take 42 minus 18 with a calculator and get the answer really easily. The thing is that if we had hundreds or thousands or even millions of calculations that we have to do. We don't want to do each of those individually. We want to find a way to get a program to do it. So this is kind of laying that foundation to allow us to have that functionality later. But in this simple example, let's go ahead and do it um, within R, Juliet minus Romeo. 
I'm going to send it. And as we can see, well, 42 minus 18 is 24. The answer looks right. We can perform some other operations as well. Let's say we wanted to add everybody's ages together. And I'm going to send that to the console. And you can see everybody's ages added together is 15. Let's say, though, we can, be, we can do um, something a little bit more complex, too. Let's say that we wanted to combine a few operations together and find the average. Uh, recall that the average is uh, you take uh, you sum all the values together, and then you divide it by the number of, value, uh, the number of values. So we've already, up here in line 9, we've added all the values together. But there are four different observations. We have Romeo, Juliet, Oscar, and Sierra. So we're going to have to end up dividing by four. So I'm going to save myself some work. I'm just going to copy what I had up there, put it in parentheses, and divide by four. Now, recall from uh, back in your days in algebra, anything that you put in parentheses gets evaluated first, and then whatever is outside the parentheses gets evaluated. So it's going to take these four values, add them together, and then only after that, it's going to divide by 4. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this, send it to the uh, console. And as you can see, every, the average age of everybody on here is 28.75. OK, well, uh, another thing that we can do um, is if, let's say we wanted this value 28.75 and we wanted to save it to use later in our program. We can save, we can create a new variable to uh, and store the result of that operation into that new variable. So let me create a new one called average age. And notice that I'm giving this uh, variable a logical uh, name. Uh, you see the name average.age. You, you think to yourself, okay, this has got to be some sort of average age of the, my observations. So in general, it's good practice to have, give, these, uh, give your variables logical names. It makes it easier for you to remember. I'm going to save myself some work. I'm just going to copy the line immediately above. And I'm going to take the average. I'm going to evaluate what was ever on the right-hand side of that arrow. Once it's done calculating, it's going to take that result, and it's going to store it in the average age variable on the left-hand side. I'm going to execute. And as you can see up here on the right, upper right-hand side in the workspace, uh, the average age is now 28.75. And just to confirm, I'm just going to type average.age and enter. And there, down on the console, you can see it's now 28.75 there as well. Okay, so um, that's uh, that's it for this lesson. Um, we're uh, we've stayed really simple for now, but in the next lesson we're going to start talking about vectors, and this is where the real power of R really starts to come through. So uh, definitely tune in for next lesson. It's going to be an important one. Uh, that's all I have for now, and I'll see you guys next time.